During this violent July 4th weekend in Chicago, shootings not only hurt people, they traumatized others. CBS 2 Stephen Graves with shocking video on the city's north side where a family is seemingly targeted in broad daylight. Tonight, this is the evidence left at a Chicago home where three windows turned into a shooting range. July 4th morning around 7.30, many Irving Park neighbors thought it was fireworks. Instead, a doorbell camera shows a man firing shots from across the street. He casually walks up North Albany near Grover Cleveland School in a hoodie and mask, then takes out a gun and aims for that home, shooting 15 times. Appearing calculated. It only lasts for about 30 seconds before he turns and walks away, seemingly unnoticed. Just couldn't believe that that could happen at that time of day in our neighborhood. I was angry. Irving Park resident Dan only wanted to give his first name out of fear for his family. That horrifies me. So Dan can't talk with the news station for fear of his family. He can't just talk about something that happened in his neighborhood because he's he's fearful for his family. Isn't that a story unto itself? Y'all get it did two for the price of one. Y'all slipping over here with these news stations, man. These reporters, that's a story. A man, a taxpayer, in the community, there was a shooting caught on camera, and he can't give out his name while he talks about it, because something might happen to him. <laughs> That's a big deal, kind of, right? Just couldn't believe that that could happen at that time of day in our neighborhood. I was angry. Irving Park resident Dan only wanted to give his first name out of fear for his family. That horrifies me to know that a family lives there. A man inside the home at the time tells CBS2 he and his family are terrified. They didn't want to go on camera. He says he was feet from the bullets. A child downstairs. They too questioning why this happened, thinking it was possibly mistaken identity. I tell you that happens a lot. I did a story on this in Detroit about a week and some change ago. This happens a lot, okay? There's so much shooting going on in these communities. It's ramped up in 2021 after being ramped up in 2020. Thugs are not like, these are not assassins who've been given a hit, the order for, to do a hit. This isn't a hit squad. This is some local homie with six baby mamas, an eighth grade education, a lean addiction, a marijuana addiction. Anger management issues, problem solving issues, most likely a psychopath, most likely he's been a victim of gun violence himself. This is not some guy like in the movies. The bald head guy with the suit and the shades gets the order from his boss. I want you to hit 777 Timberlane Drive. And he, you know, he has the briefcase with the silencer in it. <laughs> and he pulls up, you know, in the car, tinted out car, and he puts together. Screws on the silencer tip. <laughs> and he stealthily.
creeps up on the house and he takes out a <laughs> a glass cutter and cuts a hole in the window and then sticks the, like nah. This is some sherm head homeboy from the neighborhood who has a hard time keeping his pants on his behind. Like you would you would you would deserve a Nobel Peace Prize if you could get him to keep his pants on his butt. So of course <laughs> the wrong houses get shot up all the time. Of course. This happening during a violent July 4th weekend. Police saying this was one of 69 shooting incidents. Luckily, no one hurt. That would have added to the 100 shooting victims. 33rd Ward Alderman Orsana Rodriguez saying she sent violence interrupters out this week. Um, and they canvassed the She sent out violence interrupters. Because I let me guess. If she sent out the cops. Cause this is a this is a POC neighborhood. They sent out the cops. The cops was gonna kill somebody, right? For no reason, right? And listen, I'm not against violence interrupters. If you like it, I love it. It's obviously not working. 33rd Ward Alderman Orsana Rodriguez saying she sent violence interrupters out this week. Um, and they canvassed the whole block trying to get more information. Responding to calls from neighbors to do something. Her goal remains building a strong community, bringing funds for resources outside of policing. And until we take it seriously, meaningful investments to prevent violence, not to react to it. We Additional resources to prevent. <laughs> she talk about rec centers and housing. They need housing. As if it's just a bunch of home, homeless people doing all these drive-bys. Yes, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's homeless people knocking out senior citizens in Manhattan. I get that. I'm not talking about that. But these drive-bys and these gang shootings, you guys ain't homeless. And if you give them condos in an, in an upscale part of town, guess what's going to happen to that part of town? <laughs> So, she's just a typical liberal Chicago politician, and you can see why they have the issues they do. And until we take it seriously, meaningful investments to prevent violence, not to react to it, we are going to be stuck in the same place. Area 5 detectives tell me they are investigating, but no word if anyone specific was targeted here, no one in custody. Reporting in Irving Park, Stephen Graves, CBS2 News. Another road rage incident leads to gunfire on the southeast side. This time, it involves a driver and a couple riding bikes. Annie Ellie Ruiz live with what the couple is telling her. Annie Ellie? Well, hey, Lynn, the couple says they were riding their bikes here along Jefferson when a man in a Dodge white charger tried to run them over. They say the man was upset because they were riding along this road. Bike riding is a way for people to get outdoors and get some exercise. And that was the norm for this Houston couple. Yes, well, we try to ride daily, try to get out there daily. But riding their bikes will never be the same for them. The couple asked us to hide their identity for fear of retaliation. Another missed opportunity at a great story. The couple has to hide their identity because the person who did this, this news story that they're talking about, even though it's a news story, the person will still come back and kill them. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. <laughs> so they have to hide their identities. That's a huge story, man. They just seem to gloss over that part. 
The couple asked us to hide their identity for fear of retaliation. See, Sunday, they tell us they were riding their bikes here along Jefferson when a man tried to run them over with his white Dodge Charger. I jumped off the bike, and he got off. Um, he talking mad. He was cursing at me. He was just cursing at me, telling me that I was just supposed to be on the road. This husband says he quickly called 911, and the man in the car took off. But he says the man drove back and went over the grass and hit his wife. Police say he fired three shots and injured the driver. And honestly, I thought that was it. And then that's when he jumped out of the car, trying to still charge at me. Bikers nearby tell us it's dangerous for bike riders on the road. Mucha gente va, va manejando. They tell us drivers sometimes don't pay attention to bike riders. But according to state law, bicycles have the same rights as those driving a vehicle. As for the couple, they just hope that people learn to be patient and share the road with cyclists. So the, the husband was packing. And in this case, it turned out to be a good thing that the husband was packing. This is the type of case where having a gun helps out. Salute to this man for defending his wife. Even though a lot of people would have shot the guy way before this. You could tell he's a good guy. How many of y'all, hit one if you agree with me on that. A lot of people would have shot that guy in the car. Was harassing him way before he came back and ran over the white light he would have been shot immediately by a lot of people so this is a good guys feel bad that it happened to them man that they had to go through this and then now that they have this guy out there who's going to obviously come back and try to retaliate and I hope he doesn't do this to somebody else you know and he, and he realizes he didn't he didn't do right I don't think you got to worry about that as far as him doing that to somebody else, man, that's a sh I mean, like, he got ate up with bullets and driven to a hospital by ambulance and straight to surgery. <laughs> then woke up with tubes coming out of every orifice in his body. <laughs> I don't think he will do that again. However, if he happened to see y'all again, he may do something. But he ain't gonna do that to nobody else again. I hope he doesn't do this to somebody else. You know, and he and he realizes he didn't he didn't do right. Well, the woman says she's not really sure when she'll get back on the bike again. Her husband says he hopes to start riding as soon as his bike is fixed. As for the man who is being charged for this, he was identified as 26-year-old Jose Angel Hernandez. He's being charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The deadly weapon is being um, named as a car. And, of course, he was taken to the hospital to be treated for his injuries on his shoulder and on his face. He's expected to be in court tomorrow. Live, Anayeli Ruiz, K. You, 11 news. And now some new information on the stray bullet death of a high school student in Yonkers. Today, a 17-year-old pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. Jameer Thompson is accused of firing a gun at another person in April of 2019. The bullet ended up striking 18-year-old Marilyn Cato Montens in the head, killing her. Look at this little boy, man. This is who's running around your city shooting up everything this is why the wrong house gets hit so much this is why the wrong person gets hit so much imagine him how some PCP with some Hennessy in his system or how for some lean and running around with a gun listening to rap music Killer, killer, murder, murder music. With a bunch of other little dudes just like him. Egging him on. Daring him and 
Bunch of other little dudes who you trying to impress. That's a little boy, man, and that's that's how it is, man. I I promise you. I promise you. This is who's out here doing it. And McDonald's is paying fifteen dollars an hour. If in in a in in a month or two he's gonna be in, in prison. Taking a job for fifteen cent an hour. Working in the kitchen at the jail, maybe eighty, maybe twenty six cent, thirty five cent, something an hour. Doing some kind of detail. When McDonald's is now paying fifteen dollars an hour for these young people to flip burgers. There's absolutely no excuse. Absolutely no excuse. Right now. Absolutely no excuse. Today, a 17-year-old pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. Jameer Thompson is accused of firing a gun at another person in April of 2019. The bullet ended up striking 18-year-old Marilyn Cotto Montens in the head, killing her. Cotto Montens was walking down Morningside Avenue with her 9-year-old sister at the time. Thompson's sentencing is scheduled for September 2nd.